But I just wonder how tough was it for you watching from the studio when you're still at the top of the game in your sport and you became, you were so close, weren't you, to, to getting there yourself again? Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't have been closer. I was, uh, I got an in knee injury at the qualification. It wasn't such a bad injury. It was just the timing was horrible. It meant my Olympic dream was over. And he asked about if, um, if it was hard. Honestly, no, because by the time the Olympics had happened, I was already fully accepting of the situation and I leaned into it. I saw the benefits. I thought, you know what? For the first time in a long time since 2008, I'm going to get to enjoy the Olympics uh, without having the consequence of being hit in the head. So I leaned into the positive <laughs> And as you mentioned at the beginning, the punditry uh, I was able to do on my friends in the Taekwondo. Um, on other sports, uh, boxing, judo, athletics. Um, it's been amazing. And it's certainly given me clarity about um, what I want to do after Taekwondo, but we're not quite there yet. I feel like I've still got um, my best years ahead of me and I can't wait for this shortened, condensed three-year cycle to make um, history. So I'm absolutely chasing gold in Paris. But thank you. I appreciate the compliments on the punditry. <laughs> and, and Lutelli, the, the BBC love you now. Do you know there are already rumours that they might try and sign you up for Strictly Come Dancing? Well, listen, um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I think I want to save my dancing and my best footwork for the ring currently. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? You can never say never uh, for what you'll do in the future. But as things stand right now... I'm pretty sure that I'm only going to be dancing in the Taekwondo ring for the, for the near future. Certainly up until Paris 24 anyway. <laughs> uh, Lutelli, look, we've had loads of questions pouring in from our viewers, so I want to get to them now. Kane via the GB News Twitter account asks, what sports do you want introduced in the Olympics? Personally, I think darts should be, because we've seen some interesting new sports this year, Lutelli, skateboarding, for example. Yes, I mean, and all the new sports have been absolutely outstanding. Skateboarding, I think, is uh, one of my favorite new Olympic sports. I love the surfing as well. Um, I think it's awesome. We saw with, uh, with uh, Sky uh, get, at 13 years old getting an Olympic bronze medal. And admittedly, I was a little bit skeptical about some of these new events coming in. But seeing the response has been outstanding. Uh, and watching it for myself, uh, they absolutely belong in the Olympic programs. Now, that was my way of um, uh, buying myself time while I think of what should be next in the Olympics. <laughs> it, it's hard to say, but in all honesty, if, it's open, if they're opening it up now, um, I think I'm going to pick a controversial one. I think esports. I'm very interested to see what the conversation oh. is around esports in the next couple of years. Uh, millions and millions of people play all around the world. Technically, is a sport, requires focus and skill and... Um, uh, uh, massive popularity it would we no doubt would bring massive popularity to, to the game so i'm gonna go with a controversial one and uh, pick esports but admittedly i don't know if it'll actually happen but then no. again we didn't probably think skateboarding would happen before no that's this my game. type of sport sitting on your bum not having to leave your house maybe you could win a gold <laughs> medal no that would be controversial uh, speaking of controversial deborah on facebook her question is what is your opinion on trans women competing? And I guess this is in response to, to Laurel Hubbard, who, who uh, was representing New Zealand in weightlifting at the Games. Oh, no, we've just lost Lou Taylor. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Lou Taylor. Oh, Did you hear me? Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, um, that's obviously always going to be a very touchy subject, mm. especially... Um, um, uh, as it's very brand new to the games. But, um, and the, in all honesty, I don't have the answers. All I can say is that the Olympics is all about inclusion for everybody. And um, uh, I think that's the kind of uh, theme and message that the Olympics is trying to get across. But um, uh, I, don't have the, I don't have the answers to that. That's something that I'm very happy to leave to the IOC uh, to decide because. Um, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's controversial and I, I just don't have the answers to that. 
Uh, Finley via GB Views asks, Lou Taylor, are you happy enough with your bronze and silver Olympic medals or do you ever wish you had a gold? I mean, obviously, as a competitor, I um, uh, want the gold, but I am extremely happy with my bronze and silver. It was um, an amazing achievement and it took the absolute best effort I could give at that time. Obviously, the, um, the silver coming so close to gold, it was difficult to process at the time, but life goes on. And um, uh, an Olympic silver medal is nothing small. It's, it, 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 may, it may have taken a while uh, for that to, um, uh, to fully sink in, but one of the greatest things about being injured and missing this Olympics is because it, um, it really reinforced what I already knew, which was, although I'm chasing the gold and gold's everything I want, it's everything that matters, uh, I know I'll be more than okay if I don't get it. I'm happy and content in myself, very happy what I've achieved so far in the sport. If I had to retire tomorrow, I would be uh, content. However, I'm very happy to report that I believe the best is yet to come. I'm fitter, faster, stronger than I've ever been before. I've learned a lot of lessons on this cycle about how to train effectively, how to recover, how to look after myself, how to prevent injuries. And I feel that this three-year cycle is going to be a monumental one, which I'm very, very excited for. Work literally starts next week. Well, I'm excited for you. And, and it is a fascinating discussion, actually, that has been sparked by these games, I think, though, uh, Lutello, which is what is winning? You know, we, we saw uh, one of the British athletes, I think it was Whitaker, you know, who had his silver medal and he ripped it off because ben he wanted to win. Yeah, Ben Whitaker. And, and I backed him for that. I supported him for that. I understood that. But then... On the other side of the coin, we had Simone Biles, who is one of the greatest athletes of all time. And you could argue that her bronze medal at this Games actually may have meant even more to her than her previous golds because she had to overcome so much psychologically in order to get back on the beam. And she did it. And even though she didn't win, Lou Taylor, you could tell she felt like a winner. She felt like a champion again. Absolutely. And... I think it's a very good question, but I think the only right answer is that winning is different for everybody. If you know in your heart and your soul that you have the talent, the ability, the genetics, the right team around you, the right setup, and if you know that gold, uh, I'm good enough to get the gold and you've proven it to yourself, you've been world champion, you've been European champion, by all means, gold should be your goal and it's natural to be, natural to be disappointed when you don't get it. But for someone else, Never mind getting a medal, just making the Olympics, uh, you're a winner. If, uh, if, uh, it's all about, it's all relative to where you're at. And I think you can only know that if, you're, if you can be completely honest with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. Um, I feel, uh, I guess, blessed in the sense where I know that a gold medal isn't uh, an unrealistic goal for me. However, I guess the curse that comes with it is that you set yourself an extremely high standard. Um, um, but I still don't think that's any different because the same standard that I set for myself to become Olympic champion, someone else can do all those same things and just make the Olympics. So it's all relative and it all really depends on who you're speaking to. Ben, I must admit, I thought it was an amazing achievement for him. Um, I was very happy to see him get that silver. I know it, it, it's hard to swallow now, but I honestly believe that he'll process it and he'll be happy with himself um, and I don't think it will take as long as he, he thinks. I know what it's like to be in that position. I've been in that position, even worse if I can say so, one second away from the gold, and it was snatched away from me. And honestly, I felt like my world was crumbling from, within, uh, from beneath me. I felt like the ring was literally sinking in like quicksand, like you see in the old movies. That's what I felt like. I was in an arena packed with 10,000 people, and I felt like the loneliest man alive. That's how it mm. feels, that absolute total devastation when you work your entire life for one goal and it doesn't happen. However, the sun rose the next day and life goes on. And I learned the quicker, but I learned to accept the reality that I didn't have the gold medal. I'm not Olympic champion, but I'm an Olympic silver medalist. I was able to be very grateful because I thought about all the work that went into that silver medal and realized that it was the win. Uh, it, was a, um, it was a hard pill to swallow, don't get me wrong. I'm a champion and I always want to win, 
but I can accept it for what it was, and I gave my absolute best effort. Therefore, I was a winner uh, in that sense. I may have not come first on the podium, but I came first in my own personal effort and my own personal, um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Not effort, my own, uh, you know, I gave it everything I could give, yeah. essentially, is yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, I and love I think the way you the explain it, with, uh, Halo. I love the way you explain it because I can feel it so viscerally. <laughs> and, you can and feel actually, the passion. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. We've got Mark Dolan. Uh, here with us too, uh, Lutelo. Mark, do you have a question for Lutelo? Yeah, I mean, Lutelo, just hearing your story is so inspiring and you clearly have mastered not just the physical side of the sport, but the mental side of the sport as well. Your yes. psychology is so strong and so positive. Have you put a lot of work into that or did that come naturally? Well, no, um, it didn't come naturally. Um, I was actually always extremely nervous as a child going into uh, 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 the ring. So for any of you young Taekwondo fans thinking that I'm Superman, and maybe I am some of the time, but <laughs> if uh, you see me at seven, eight years old, I had a pre-fight ritual, and the pre-fight ritual was throwing up before every single match. That's how nervous uh, and an uh, anxious I was about fighting. Uh, so it certainly didn't always come naturally to me, but with time, it's become the most natural thing. Now, getting more specific on the psychology, um, that really started at an elite level when I met Dr. Steve Peters, who um, is the author of um, 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 uh, the chimp model, the chimp management model. Now, um, what I learned about the brain is invaluable. And the real key was that all my unhelpful thoughts that I used to try and suppress and throw to one side because I'm a big, bad fighter and I can't have any weaknesses. Uh, the moment I started to accept that it's normal to feel nervous, that um, uh, not, uh, if I didn't feel nervous, then I'll be classified as a psychopath. So that made me feel a bit better. That was completely normal. And what normal people have to do is work. So what I did, I started putting in the work. I started putting just as much work into my mental um, uh, training as I did my physical training. And that's what I believe took me to the absolute elite level where I could push into Olympic finals. So to be more specific, the biggest thing for me was being completely honest about the feelings I had around fighting. And sometimes it would go, I would feel amazing, but I didn't like to admit to myself when it wasn't amazing. So by admitting to myself and being honest to myself, that was the first key. And everything else after that was pretty easy. Lutelo Muhammad, you are a superstar, superman. Thank you so much for being here for tonight's big question. And Mark Dolan, you're a superstar, you so superman much. too. Thank you. And Mark <laughs> will be here, of course. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at nine o'clock. So make sure you tune in. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.